hope was that these Florida showers would have passed through by now, but it looks like we're in for a wet one tonight at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Possession of the football going back over to New Orleans now. And the Saints open the 2020 season hosting Tampa Bay for Tom Brady's welcoming reception into the NFC South. And they welcomed him rather rudely. And then they, they were kind of like the Saints, a high-performance engine because they needed a little bit to warm up. But after two touchdowns from their spark plug, Alvin Kamara, they really started to fire on all cylinders. And I think I just got enough cliches in there for a full football season and so I'll show myself out. Oh, you did well. Staccato, man. They just came one after the other. You were on a roll. I love that. But this New Orleans Saints team, they spent the entire offseason hearing about Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, all the additions, Gronk coming to town. And as their star defensive end, Cameron Jordan said so eloquently, hey, we welcome Tom Brady and Gronk to the NFC South. And we welcome the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They'll just be playing for second place. I love that confidence that that New Orleans Saints team possesses. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Off the play fake to Kamara. It's Breeze. Open man is Michael Thomas. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. New Orleans. <laughs> Come on, one thing for sure. You know that Michael Thomas is going to be the target on a third down pass. And Drew Brees finds him and keeps this drive moving. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. There to stop him was Carlton Davis. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Shotgun now for Breeze. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he finds Cook. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. First down, Saints. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now Breeze lost the football, but fortunately the Saints were able to hold on to it, so they will indeed keep possession. Able to fall on it, but look where they recovered it. That's a big loss. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it, able to retain possession. That was big for them. So they keep the football, but now face second and long. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The pro bowler, Michael Thomas, was the intended receiver. And it's third down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside. And my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play. And that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking long for Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas. 34 yards. And the Saints have taken the early lead. They got to love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. 
If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. After the touchdown, wants to kick it off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Tampa Bay taking the field again here, Charles. And before this next drive, let's visit what was easily the most anticipated game of week one. Their game against New Orleans. New Orleans getting the better of the Buccaneers, 34-23. Of course, it was the debut of Tom Brady in Pewter. Uh, against Say it again. In, Say it again. Oh, Pewter? Yeah, that's, that's the color, right? Tom Brady in Pewter. We've known this was coming, yet finally it was here. And I don't know about you, but it still seems surreal to see Tom Brady in that uniform. Yeah, it was strange, and unfortunately, a couple of costly interceptions for TB12 that really helped New Orleans win this football game. Yeah, and, and look, he's going to play better down the road. His head coach, Bruce Arians, said it really well. He came out lighting it up. But then they had some poor drives, penalties, turnovers. That's what cost them. And of course, they ran into the three-time defense. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Here we go. Oh my goodness, was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Here's the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. McCoy, the ball carrier. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. That's a gain of three. Brings up third and 12. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. From the gun, it's Brady. And that is incomplete. Great. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. The all-pro Deontay Harris deep for New Orleans. Thirty-three yards is the distance on the punt there, and the Saints will take over with a first down and ten. At their own New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. They have to be thrilled with that first drive that got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, it takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. Pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the 25 on second down, Breeze. Jared Cook, his Pro Bowl tight end, was the target. But now it'll be third down. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And this is Cook with a grab. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. 
And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. A 41-yard punt, nine on the return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Mike Evans has been so good downfield. I think that sometimes we end up taking him for granted. When you look back at what he's done each year in the league, he's been a 1,000-yard receiver each and every time. Now paired with the prolific Tom Brady, those numbers could really jump. And they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. So we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. On second down, it's Jones. And good running, going to get this down close to a first at the Saints 32. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Out of the shotgun, it's McCoy. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. The last run got six, now second and four. They'll run with a former Tar Heel, T.J. Logan. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a first down on a gain of 10. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Cam Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. It's a gain of and when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Big stop, King. Big stop. Let's go. March 47. Second and five now. Brady, his throw incomplete. The pro bowler, Chris Godwin, the intended receiver. Third down here. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Brady's throw on third down there is incomplete. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. So on fourth down, on comes the Buccaneer kicker, Matt Gay. And Gay knocks this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. 
So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. Turn Deontay Harris. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And and brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Ready. You ready? From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Kamara, the ball carrier. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. From just shy of midfield, Breeze. Good coverage that time by Sean Bunning. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Bree's going to throw. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 39. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. First down. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. And that's complete to Sanders. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Breeze on the draw, gives to Camara. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Saints on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This is third and four. Breeze now. Got him in. He finds Sanders. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Good catch there by Emmanuel Sanders, and he's exactly who you want in your locker room and who you want on your team. He can integrate into an offense quickly. He joined the San Francisco 49ers in midseason last year and had a huge impact in their run to a Super Bowl. He's a veteran receiver that everyone respects. And yes, he can still play. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the 5-yard line. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. And just one man in the backfield here. That's Kamara, second and goal. 
And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Saints now add six to their lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Footing always a concern, but the extra points up and good, and that pushes the lead up to 11. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. On the return, Dare Ogunbowale. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. Demario Davis makes the tackle. He led the Saints in that category in 2019. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. Brings up third and six. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun now for Brady. Open man has got it. It's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A big gain of 31 on third down. Still all sorts of time left in this game, and you'd like to be able to say take it one play at a time. But the truth is, they're probably going to have to hit on a few big plays in the passing game to close this gap. And that's a good start right there. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. The clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Credit that sack to Marcus Davenport. Well, that's the second time they've gotten to Brady, and you've got to do it a variety of ways. You want your regular pressure. Sometimes you have to bring extra. But in this case, they got to him, and that just doesn't happen very often. It's a rarity. He's just such a veteran. His pocket presence so good. But, hey, tip of the cap to the D. Keeps himself upright. And the pressure gets to him again. Cameron Jordan, he's the one that drops him this go around, and that pass rush getting strong here, back-to-back -back sacks. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Well, that throw by Brady incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. 
It's now Are we on the same page here, partner? Because I think they had the right idea. Just take what you can get on third and forever. Yeah, in real life, I'd say yes. It's just these video games are tempting. You want to go downfield with it. I like the way you've evolved. Yeah. You know, you've learned how to play it the Madden way. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? He said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well, and he's been right. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Saints. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A 10th carry for Kamara. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. 38-yard line, second and nine. To throw is Breeze. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Murray. It's a gain of nine yards. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Makes it third and inches. The offense on third down tonight, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. He can run for it, and he will. A gain of eight on the keeper and a first down. And that was a nice, strong run by the guy they called the field general. First down, New Orleans. Now this time, Breeze will throw. On the check down, he finds Kamara. That catch good for only a couple. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker. And now it's third down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. His pass caught at the four. Complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. 
And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Alvin Kamara with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. Lutz will look to add the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. The kick is good. Makes the score Saints 21. Buccaneers 3. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. On the return, Ogan Bawale. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. 56 to Mott, boy, 56. From the 35 on second down, Brady looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Well, whenever you talk about players that really broke out in the 2019 season, you better add Chris Godwin to that list. Over 1,300 yards receiving, nine touchdowns. He was second among receivers last season receiving yards per game at 95. This guy combines great body control, excellent strength, and terrific route running ability to become a really big downfield threat. A gain of eight. First down, Tampa. First down, On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. Operating from the gun, Brady. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski. Complete. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. six. Brings up second and four at the Saints 46 yard line. Looking to throw again on second down. Brady. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And Brady's throw there incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. 
And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. And here's a throw that's taken in by the tight end, Cook. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. When we watch Drew Brees practice, the thing that always strikes us is after every throw he makes, he continues to go through his progressions. You know, so he gets that muscle memory. Okay, in a game, if I don't have this throw I just made, I might have this one, I might have that one. It's amazing. One of the reasons he's come out so hot today, he's already seen it happen. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. That'll bring up second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From midfield, here's Breeze. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A special teams mistake there, no doubt. Just 26 yards officially on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. From the gun, Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Throwing on first down is Brady. Open man is Howard, the tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Brings up second and five. From the 47, it's second and five. Operating from the gun, Brady. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Again, it's Brady. 
This first running back, McCoy. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach? On the return, Ogan Bawale. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. So that'll back him up five. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Brady going to throw. A dump underneath to Jones. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. And that's a good job there by the corner. And we do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. He's Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Alvin Kamara hit the NFL first with a bang, had double-digit touchdowns in his first two seasons. Now, production fell off a little bit last year. Just six times did he find the end zone. But his ability to run it and catch it out of the backfield makes him hard to cover. Look for a bounce-back season in 2020. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And Sanders has got it complete. Seven yards to pick up there. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the Buccaneers' 21-yard line. 
working with a second and three. From the gun, it's Breeze. Complete, Smith has it. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. A gain of nine I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Breeze now on first down. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. The big Vita Vea pushing his way through to wind up with a sack. Oh, you know, that did not feel good. Vita Vea with the sack there. And we know he's a big-time presence on the defensive line, especially against the run. But he'll surprise you with his quickness and his upfield agility in order to get to the quarterback. If you're blocking him, it's going to be a long afternoon or evening, a tough proposition. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? On third and long, it's Breeze. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. It's Breeze getting it into the hands of Traquan Smith. And the Saints add on to their lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Lutz good on the extra point, and they open the lead up now to 25. Will Lutz. To After kick the touchdown, Lutz Lutz. Lutz to kick it off. <laughs> On the return, Ogan Bawale. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So out come the Bucks now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. They'll keep it on the ground with McCoy this time. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. He's got Evans. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. They'll run on first down. 
It's Jones, and he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. across midfield. Demario Davis there on the stop. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Throwing his Brady on third down. He completes it to Evans. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That goes for a gain of 31. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game. And for a second, I thought they had it right there. A look at on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval as a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now Brady looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kiko Alonso. He's at the 50, 30, and what a return as he brings this all the way back down to the 20 yard line. By the Saints. They'll take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line. The busy night continues for Kamara. And Dominican Sue makes the tackle. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. So from the 17, here's second and seven. Again, it's Kamara. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. First and That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Brings up nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and goal from the one. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Well, that's going to bring up a big call now because he's unable to make the play himself on second down. Now you just have to wonder, will they keep the ball in his hands on third down? Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Shotgun now for Breeze. Got a man open. It's Thomas. It's a touchdown for New Orleans. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas, his second touchdown of the night. And the Saints take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash in for six. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Saints 35, Buccaneers 3. We'll After the touchdown, to Lutz to kick it off. On the return, Ogunbowale. 
And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Buccaneers offense ready to rock and roll again. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Brady. He finds his tight end, Howard. That's complete. Not much there, only a yard. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Second and nine. On the delay, Jones. And he's got this down to the 35. 11 yards there, first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing now is Brady. Throwing middle and it's complete. Three yards the game there, second down. And he's been one of their few bright spots here this afternoon. And as you pointed out, so far he's gotten his. That's not been the issue at all. But the teammates, the other guys, they've been shut down. That's why the defensive guys have to feel pretty good, even though he's over 100 yards. Yeah, he topped 100 with that last catch. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time. And it's third down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. On third down, Brady quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Bucs try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Saints will have the football back. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. You know, pass complete here to Sanders, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And certainly a valuable tool to have in your kit, Emmanuel Sanders, and he's shown us quite a bit in this one. And that's why they wanted to use him immediately. You know they come out of the locker room saying, let's get the ball to him, get our offense jump started, and in this case, it's worked throughout the game. Thus, they have the lead. First carry for a Central Florida alum, Latavius Murray. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. 
Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They stay on the ground. This time it's Camara. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. That'll be good for six, but now it's fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. I got you, boy. I got you, boy. 56. Mike, 56. Brady now on first down. This one complete to Scott Miller. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Second and two. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there as they were able to connect. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And there's a nice catch there by Rob Gronkowski. And we all know the story. Came out of retirement, got himself traded to Tampa Bay from New England in order to reconnect with his favorite quarterback. And no one has caught more Tom Brady touchdowns than Gronk, and he expects to add to that total in Tampa Bay. Brady's throw there complete. A gain of six there on first. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And he finds Howard complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 43. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. On first and 10, here's Brady. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. A three-yard pickup. Brings up second and seven. At the Saints, 40-yard line. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Brady to throw again. And that one finds the ground, breaking a string of five straight completions. And it brings up second down. No third, third down. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. The Bucks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and seven. Now Brady again. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. 
Marcus Davenport, his second sack of the night. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. That throw by Brady incomplete. He was trying to find O.J. Howard, and now it's third down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. On third and long, it's Brady. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And a throw there going to be incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. It's Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. The Bucs try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Saints will have the football back. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. And for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. They run it again with Kamara. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Devin White on the tackle. A three-yard gain on the play. Brings up third down. Yeah, the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. There's Breeze. The open man is Smith. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take him to look like turtle at this point. You just go ahead and play. Trying to run down some clock with Kamara. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. New Orleans. Alvin Kamara. 66 yards as his guys continue to pour it on. They seemingly just continue to score at will. And <laughs> as great as it's been for the offense, you got to feel for that defense down there. I love that you use the word will because both teams came into the game with the will to win. But one team has obviously imposed its will on the other and broken them. Because what we're seeing right now, Wow, that's a defense that's in tatters after what they faced in this ballgame. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. On the return, Ogun Bawale. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. 
And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Complete to Chris Godwin. It's a gain of eight. Brings up second and two at the 36-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From the gun, it's Brady. He finds his target, it's Evans. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Let's go. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Shotgun now for Brady. Open man is Howard, the tight end. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They go ahead and mark it in the win column, but as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them gets big yardage and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. And Brady's throw there, incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Throwing again, Brady. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Cameron Jordan so tough to block as he gets in there to record the sack. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Yeah, that's going to be intercepted. Malcolm Jenkins, the pro bowler. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. Intercepted by the Saints. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. And now he'll tuck it and run. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. On second down, Kamara. And he'll be taken down here, and that is how this one is going to come to an end. Tonight's final score is... Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we bid you good night from Tampa.